G'day Riverheads, this is Riley from Desecrator from Melbourne, Australia, and you're listening to Dave Softy on the Metal Meltdown on Metal Messiah Radio. Keep screaming, keep yelling, keep thrashing. Metal Maniacs, here we go. Please help me welcome to Metal Messiah Radio, hailing from Melbourne, Australia, from Thrash Metal Band and Desecrator. Joining us, we have founding member Riley Strong on vocals and guitars. Welcome to the Metal Meltdown, Riley. Thank you for this opportunity. No, man, thank you. Very excited to have a chat. Yeah, this is uh, quite interesting being that we have uh, 15 hours between us, so I have to tell you, I'm really happy that we finally have the opportunity to do this. So thank you very much for this. It's, uh, it's awesome, man. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if the ether keeps our voices stable. That's it. That's all we could hope for. And uh, I have checked out your debut full offering to the Gallows, released through Dinner for Wolves from Australia. And yep. also through, I see, Violent Creek Records in Europe. So I'm, I'm interested to know, is... Uh, Dinner for Wolves, your band's own label? 
No, no, it's actually not our label. Um, it's some guys that in the Melbourne and Australian scene have a fair history with, um, you know, different different roles as promoters and and uh, different labels over the years. Uh, they've put together a, a small roster that's uh, slowly growing of, uh, of Australian bands. They've got uh, different bands from different kind of tiers and different ages where I think uh, where they're only thrash metal band uh, at the moment but um, they they liked it they've uh, been following us for a while over here they've been watching us uh, tour and and kind of grow the the band over the last few years so they they approached us and said they wanted to work on it um, and they yeah they did really well over here for us man the, so they're an Australian only label um, and it was just just a small independent but they are they work hard for us man they've really done a lot for us on the pr front they helped us find violent creek in europe and they did a lot of uh, support for us while we we're on the road recently in europe so they they've been really cool to us man that's outstanding news i'm glad to hear that yep. and i gotta tell you to the gallows it's a really uh, kick-ass thrash offering and uh it's really outstanding and i'm glad that we are here to talk about this as i said so let's learn all we can about Desecrator. I see that the band formed in 2008, and I noticed you have a few EPs uh, ahead of this to the Gallows release. So it's great to have this full album. So congratulations on that. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, it's been the the timeline to the band has been something that I guess doesn't follow the standard stereotypical pattern of a lot of heavy metal bands. There's a there's a big thought with bands where you you know you get your band together, you write your songs, and you do you really try and get that release out first. Like a lot of bands will try and get an EP out before they they start, or they'll get out a you know they'll get out an album and then they'll try and do something with the album. We were a little bit different to that, and it wasn't it wasn't overly a conscious choice, but um, we were always a- aiming to be, and we were very focused on being a live band. Um, it was it was our kind of it was just what we were about. Our songs were kind of such a, the early batches of songs we wrote was such a kind of stage focused and gig focused uh, batch of songs that, that it made sense to us to just get out and get playing. And we, we did a five track kind of demo so that we could get some shows and we, we hit the ground running in Melbourne and it really kind of got some traction fast. There wasn't a huge amount of, of thrash metal happening here at the time. So we kind of, we're a point of difference on a lot of death metal bills and a lot of kind of mixed bills. And a lot of people were, were wanting to hear it at the time. It was happening in the rest of the world, you know, in that kind of mid 2000s era, a lot of the older bands were, were starting to tour overseas again, but they weren't getting out to Australia yet. So there was a, a lot of, of knowledge that, that thrash metal was doing a lot again, but it wasn't happening in Australia yet. There were a couple of bands doing it, but it wasn't really, there weren't full waves of whole gigs of, thrash metal happening so we just started doing it and it snowballed we we managed to to snag a national tour early on with forbidden and we did a lot of other things that were kind of just getting our name out there and then the momentum grew fast enough that the idea of of getting in a studio and doing an album it just wasn't even focused on or, or discussed at the time because it was going so well just playing. We were touring. We were doing what we wanted to do. We did put out a live album uh, a couple of years after we'd started, which seemed to, again, it seemed to suit because it was the, the sound that we were going for. Uh, it was the it was kind of just the, the ethos of the band. It was a touring band. We just wanted to be on the road all the time. And we met, were for a band that was on the other side of the planet to where all the big continents were. We were managing to do it over here. So we just kind of stuck with it we we chucked out uh a 10 inch uh which was called down to hell and um that did really well for us over here as well it was all it's all independent stuff all just sold by the band and you know posted online i think some of them are still available digitally but you know we ran out of copies pretty early on and it just kind of happened from there and, uh, and all of a sudden we'd done multiple tours multiple international tours and we turned around and went right we kind of need to do an album it's it's getting to that point where without an album it's it's becoming a joke like we need to do this we need to get into the studio and and to get to that next level we're going to actually have to do a studio album we pulled the band off the road and that was when we had the conscious thought to say all right well we need to do this we need to do it well how are we going to do it and represent ourselves well how are we going to get this x amount of years of touring to come through this album and that was the challenge of to the gallows 
I tell you, just the fact that you uh, enjoy the, the touring part of it and then you actually are a touring band, I give you a lot of respect and credit for that because mm. I've talked to, to a lot of bands over around the, your area and they mm. just don't get it together. They don't have any initiative to do any touring. They want to make the studio albums, but as far as touring, they're not really uh, doing that. So it, it's outstanding that you tell us this information about how important it is for you to do these tours and uh, getting on a show with Forbidden. Yeah, that that congratulations on that. That's outstanding as well. It was a really cool start, man, for a young band. Like we didn't have anything out at the time. It was a the promoter who was doing the tour in Australia. He he happened to see us at a show and we were doing well. And he he gave us the tour. It was the classic way, you know. It wasn't like a lot of bands these days. We didn't get a package put in front of us or anything like that. That you got to go and seek it out. It was the classic. A promoter saw us and liked us and put us on a tour, which couldn't have been more organic at the time. And it couldn't have been a better uh, inspiration for for at the time we were a fairly green band we were a new band you know so to to ins to inspire us and give us a leg up it really kind of kick-started me anyway into thinking this is it this is what we've got to keep doing so we are a world away from you know from from touring america we are a world away from europe and we're a lot of expensive plane flights away so when you are a young band and you, you're trying to get everything together at once you're trying to keep your band going and you're trying to grow and do all these things it's it's hard to make those giant leaps early yeah, on but, you, for sure, yeah. but there are things that you can do from out here you know we can the southeast asia is a great market they love they love heavy metal they especially love death metal and thrash metal and that's right on our doorstep so you know we can do there are things that a touring band can do to become an international band to to earn their touring stripes you know australia doesn't have a ton of towns and they're all spread out but there are towns there and there are gigs if you're prepared to do the hard yards and do the long drives in between them they are there and there's a great supportive heavy metal scene an undercurrent like proper independent underground scene out here which is a fantastic thing and a scene that has supported us so well over the years because we w wanted to find them all we played in tiny towns in the middle of nowhere and then we played big cities and played great shows you know but we do it all and it just it became something to thrive on it became a a thing that we were really proud to do you know whether we were out in a country town in the only pub they had playing to 20 people or whether we were playing to you know hundreds in sydney or something it was a it wasn't a all right well it has to be good shows and we have to do this and we have to do that it was just let's get out there let's find these people you know let's find where heavy metal is and who's enjoying it and what came back and came back really strongly is that they're still out there you know all the bands that say so you can't tour anymore or it's you know it's too hard to tour or the support's not there it definitely is you've just got to go out and find it you know i hear you now uh, riley could you give us a little bit of a history of uh, how the band actually got its name who selected desecrator for the band's name and if you could as well uh, let mm. us know who makes up the current lineup in the year 2017 of desecrator who else is in yep. the band thank you well i named the band uh and it, it literally i mean the one of the hardest things to do when you start a band is think of a name and especially at this point like there's been so many bands and right. all the there's so many good named bands and there's no matter what name you think of someone will have had a crack at it at some point like it's it's not it's really hard to find something you know original in inverted commas so i sat down with a bit of paper and i just wrote lists of names and eventually it just stood out like it was i think to date if you look up on metal archives i think there's been 18 desecrators in yeah, the world I noticed that. I so noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> there's definitely a few that have been there but the way i figured it is to my knowledge and to my research because i did look into it at the time i didn't want to pinch anyone else's thunder or take anyone else's name that they'd done hard work for there was no active touring and succeeding desecrator that I could find. A couple of bands had, had used the name at different periods, and they're you know they're in the archives if you look them up. Right. But but I couldn't find anyone that I was cutting their lunch, and I was like I, I loved the name. Uh, we had a sick logo early on, and I was just like this is it. I'm taking it. It's a race to the first record deal is the way I saw it. Right. If someone beats me, then I'll back off, you know. And then you have um, to add an AD at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's exactly. Put put AD or put ink at the end like Venom have done. So, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, we could do something. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, you know, it, it, it always suited, it, you know, having a – 
an evil sounding name with an OR on the end is like, I'm pretty sure it's written somewhere in the thrash metal rule book. Like, you know, creator, it's a, it's a thing, put an OR on the end of a cool word and it's, pr- and it's pretty thrash metal. So I'm, I'm pretty sure my thinking was along those lines when yeah. I was coming up with it, you know, Absolutely. Um, great call on that. Yeah, man. But, uh, we, at the moment, the band is in, it's, um, what I'd probably call it's second full wave lineup. Um, uh, our drummer Jared has been in the band for maybe five years now. And he's the, the second drummer that desecrators had, uh, he came in, uh, through actually a, a mutual friend of ours who a guy named Dave Haley, who's the drummer from a band called Psychroptic, which are fairly well known over the world. They're a tech death band from Australia. Um, uh, he linked us up, uh, and Jared, uh, from our original drummer, who was a lot more kind of punk uh, oriented uh, in his playing, very kind of Dave Lombardo. Uh, in his, if you listen to the early Desecrators, a lot of kind of snare first, intense Dave Lombardo beats, which I love that stuff. He had extremely fast hands, but he was very much, you know, played on a four piece kit quite often so very much in that kind of punk hardcore realm which suits the 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 crossover to thrash really nicely and that gave a lot of kind of like urgency and angst to our music in the early days whereas jared came in and he's a much more expanded kind of metal drummer like if you're going to compare kind of keep the the slayer comparison it was definitely the 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 entrance of bostaff was like it was uh he's much more open-handed and much more kind of expanded in his heavy metal playing and that definitely helped the songwriting of to the gallows Uh, i use him a lot for um for arrangement ideas i use him a lot for production ideas and we still do it in that traditional lars and james in the room together type of vibe we still get in a rehearsal room to do the writing we're not a big technology writing bass band i know a lot of bands a lot of like fantastic tools out there these days that you can sit at home on your computer and create all kinds of things and it's a a very different process to create computer driven music and to come up with your ideas and be, be able to harness them on the moment but we're very much an organic band in the way that we are we do still write at a thousand decibels in a room until it feels right you know nice. um the other dudes we've just had a new guitarist come in before the uh the airborne tour we just did across europe his name's aj and he comes from a uh, more power metal background he's a, he's a brilliant guitarist he's one of the the most freakishly phonetic musicians i've ever worked with in my life um we again uh, our last guitarist scotty was an amazing part of the band and his stamp as a lead guitarist that he put on desecrator was a fantastic thing for years uh it came to the end of a working life and now we've got a big red-headed bloke who looks somewhere between zach wild and plays like sholnick like it's uh it's been a really cool change and then uh and then, of course, because I'm a big guy for symmetry, I've got to have a big, tall redhead on the other side of the stage, and that's Jerry, our bass player. So if I've got one big, tall, long-haired, red-headed bloke on one side, you've got <laughs> to do it on the other side because otherwise the stage will feel lopsided. So that's Jerry, our bass player, and he's just cl- classic thunder from down under bass player, which, you know, you can set your watch to that bloke. So it's awesome. It's a good lineup, man. It's a healthy lineup. They've stuck with it. We're enjoying a lot of great growth with the album and the guys are really proud to to be an international touring entity and to to keep pushing man it's an exciting time yeah it's a great accomplishment for you as well so let's spend some more time talking about to the gallows can we learn who produced this and where and which studio this was recorded in yep we didn't uh sign on a a named producer uh we did talk about it it's a proven thing that, that having an outside influence and a respected outside influence can do fantastic thing for bands writing. I'd love to one day have the budget to actually sit in a studio with a proper producer and do that. We, you know, we didn't have that luxury this time. Jason Fuller, who runs a studio in Australia called Goat Sound Studios, he, he punches out a lot of, a lot of grindcore and a lot of heavy metal. He's got a really good active studio here. He was our engineer and he actually runs a rehearsal room on the side of the studio that we rehearse at. That's kind of our home base. We store our back line there and we've kind of 
written and workshopped a lot of the songs there. So the space that we were in felt really natural. So when it came to deciding on the studio, it seemed to make sense that, that not only was it a fantastic studio and he's a great engineer, but we felt comfortable there. So we didn't turn up to a place that we'd never been. It wasn't a foreign, you know, a foreign space that we had to try to create a vibe in. It was, it was somewhere that we knew somewhere that we understood. So uh, it was a no brainer on that. And he naturally put a bit of a producer's hat on just, you know, I think most engineers, uh, if you have a good relationship with them sonically and, you know, personally, they won't keep their opinions to themselves. So <laughs> he put a bit of a producer hat on. It was basically from there, it got sent over to Brett Boatwright, uh, who's firm audio farm, and he's done a lot of stuff. But basically, again, it was, we talked about getting a guy a name again in inverted commas you know do we do we try and contact Fleming Rasmussen or do we do someone who's done something famous to you know to get a name on it and at the end of the day it came down to yeah it wasn't the motivation to go out and find a name it was more about the end product uh so you know it did happen that the guy we used has done x amount of bands that you could name drop but it wasn't about that it was really just about the result for us it worked out really well man it it was a a seamless process i cut all my vocals in front of a cardboard cutout of Blackie Lawless was screaming at me, so I screamed at him, and it seemed to seemed to work. Yeah, outstanding. And uh, I remember the first <laughs> tune I played off the uh, off the album to the gallows was "Thrash Is a Verb." It's a really fun tune, yep. and it kicks ass. The album's kick ass, and you have a co- uh, at least one slower tune on it that's a little, you know different than the rest of the music but yeah an outstanding offering and uh, also Thanks, yeah also the cover art is very interesting yeah. it has a very i would say like a sci-fi horror type of imagery could you tell yep. us who designed this and uh, who also who designed the current logo the cover again was a a guy in australia he's a he's a tattooist uh, by the name of of jason spazito if you want to look him up on instagram which you should because tattooists on instagram are sick they do great work and put it up there i think he goes as spud spudzito for anyone who wants to look him up but he uh he, he works at a shop in melbourne he'd done a couple of shirt designs for us in the past he kind of played with some art for us and he's a really cool dude he's a young thrasher and he's doing great things in the tattoo world like he's getting a a really good reputation over here um, for doing phenomenally detailed black and gray tattoo work so when it came to doing the uh, the album cover we didn't really know what we wanted i had kind of an idea of of the concept but I'm not really a picture guy. I don't see these things. I couldn't sketch it out. I just had an idea of, of what I wanted it to represent. So I literally walked in and said, man, I'm sorry, this is going to be really unhelpful, but here's a whole bunch of words. Can you make art? <laughs> and <laughs> he, he nailed it, man. Like he came back. The first thing we saw was the full layout of the album. That was just obviously when I gave him a disjointed, you know, uh, design brief, it, it came together in what it was and the the actual the actual original of the artwork uh is a, a giant painting he painted the whole thing out and if a, when he sent us the um the digital scan of it i remember sitting down with it and zooming in on different spots to kind of just checking out the detail it's, the dude owns like six or seven cats and the thing was just covered in cat hair <laughs> there was oh, clumps wow. because when he'd painted the cats had come past so if you zoom in far enough you can actually find little, little bits of his cat's hair uh, in the artwork. Effect. And I thought it was cool. I'm like, I love it in there. That's definitely, it's it's so cool that that's like the human aspect of this, you know. It's a, right. it's a real painting done by a real dude in his lounge room and he sat there at night when he wasn't working doing it. And I love it. I really, uh, there was something about it, <laughs> that that appealed to me. So I kind of dig that it's, that it's hidden in amongst all the grim heavy metal. There's cats. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that came together really well, man. Uh, you know, again, we we're really happy with it. Uh, it looks sick on the vinyls. Like, I was big on wanting a wraparound cover that that uh, went all the way around from the front to the back and had a scene that joined up and wasn't a cut image or a, a reworking of the front on the back. I wanted a full piece, and yeah, he's done it really well. The um, the logo has been has been the way it's been since day one. Our first ever bass player. Uh, came up with it and he, he sat down and, and sketched it. I told him again, it was, it was one of my really bad design br- briefs of, you know, I want a logo that is a, is kind of a, 
it's an image as much as it is lettering. It's a, a recognisable shape that, that will be a stamp on people's chests. I want them to know what it is without having to read it as soon as they see it. I want anyone who's read Desecrated's logo to be able to come back and see it at a glance and know it's desecrated without rereading desecrated. I think you nailed it because it's a, it's a shape. It's a, it's a badge, you know, and yeah. that was a big thing for us. So we stuck with it. It's had a few little different incantations, which I'm sure all bands do, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the form of it at the moment. We don't get asked too much. What does it say? We only get asked occasionally. What does it say? And I think that's a good ratio. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you definitely have a lot of great, great things going for you in the band between the imagery and the sound. So you know, excellent on that. And you had mentioned the Airborne Festival, and from what I noticed on Facebook, you were very busy during this time. So would you like to uh, spend some time talking about? some of your favorite moments of the airborne tour and if you'd like to let us know about any shows in the near future that you may have coming up we could spread the word on that as well it uh the airborne tour was fantastic man those uh it had been a thing that you know they're from melbourne australia as well and we know those dudes they've um they've come down to to a bunch of shows over the year and i think that was actually how i met them properly was that they'd come to a couple of shows and I knew who Airborne were, of course. They're, you know, they're just as big here as they are overseas. We kind of met them and we talked about a couple of times the idea of going on the road together and how it had worked because, you know, they are such a a rock and roll band. They're, they're the most Australian rock and roll band you could currently put your ears to type of thing. Um, and, you know, we're a lot heavier than that. But we both bands felt that there was something that kind of threaded us together, whether it was an Australiana part of our sound that, that both bands have that, you know, is a point of difference or whether it was, we're both a very front man, strong band, uh, or just whether as, you know, I think one night Joel from Airborne said that, uh, he said, well, you know, we're a little bit heavier than ACDC. And you're a little bit heavier than Metallica. Metallica and ACDC can play together. So why can't Airborne and Desecrate it? And there that was go. the conversation. And it was that simple, man. You know, it was it was a cool idea that came up. And they're doing so, so well on their, on their Breaking Out of Hell tour in Europe. They've got such an amazing following that it was it was a huge opportunity for us to get exposed to a whole different audience you know we we'd done previously last year we'd been out with uh with overkill and we'd been out with venom inc and we'd you know we've been out with hyrax the year before that so we'd done a lot of european stuff but they'd been really really suited you know within the thrash metal genre tours for us um so this was a chance. It was a chance to expose ourselves to a bigger audience and a wider audience, but still a heavy metal appreciating audience. So it was cool, man. We went out not knowing ex exactly what it was going to be, but that also, again, because because as I've mentioned, you know, the live thing is such a focus for us. That was really something to, to thrive on. Like we wanted to go out there and, and prove ourselves. You know, we wanted to go out there and prove that the thrash metal could translate and prove to ourselves and prove, prove to to everyone else that that thrash metal is not an insular genre it's not a uh you know stuck kind of within its own cattle gate genre thrash metal can like it did in the 80s it can transcend it. it it goes to heavy metal fans it goes judas priest fans will still get it iron maiden fans will still get it metallica fans of course they'll get it you know it is an inclusive genre and it's a genre that that metalheads won't often turn their back on you know I've, I've always said that um you know two things you'll agree with a metalhead everyone will get drunk and talk to you about either rain in blood or ride the lightning no matter what heavy metal they're into, there'll always be a conversation about one of those two. It always comes back to thrash metal. Everyone's always had a point of their life where they've grown up with or been or been influenced by, and that was why we really wanted to get out and prove we could do it in front of these big audiences. And you know, for a, a lot of the shows on that tour, man, we were playing to bigger crowds than we ever have. Like walking out uh, to the Olympia in Paris, which is like a big old three, three and a half thousand person uh venue and that's those type of crowds are up the top end of what we've ever done they're big stages and big old th theater rooms with big balconies on them and it really was it was a it was a next level experience for us to be exposed to those crowds but not only to get out and play in front of them to to feel like 
they got it, you know, to, to have great reactions every night, to, to get the circle pits, to get the, you know, the crowd surfers and to get them all chanting and singing along was, was one of those things. It's what you do it for. And to do it on that level to a, a crowd that was outside of our box was just, it was a feeling of accomplishment, man. It was a exactly. really cool thing to do. And it was something that we, you know, we're, we're a hundred percent planning on capitalizing on because we f- feel like that we're, you know, reminding ourselves that the thrash metal is not just for the thrash clubs. There is no boundaries. We set our own boundaries. You know, I think that that it's a cool thing. So, I mean, the the tour was wild because you know it was a bunch of Australians and a a, cr- a crew that were used to Australians. So there was a lot of a lot of crazy nights, a lot of fun stuff, and the bands were getting along so well. Uh, for the most part, it was a two band package. So it was just Desecrator playing before airborne and it was a really cool a bunch of dudes who were really excited for each other and really happy to see each other succeed like every night we'd be side of stage watching them kill it and they'd be between their warm-ups they'd be running out you know for our set and kind of just cheering along we had that real camaraderie thing that makes for special memories so it was cool man it was a really fucking cool tour and it was something that i think we'll take with us and use the lessons from for years to come so yeah it's 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 something that we're already we're discussing now with different promoters what is going to be the move next year as far as shows coming up um we don't have a lot going on in australia right now um which is kind of by choice we've come back to regroup we're really excited to be on the back of a tour like that and to have the inspiration to create we're the band's in a really creative space, so we're harnessing that and we're using that. Um, you know, definitely the tail end of summer, we've got some some kind of things firming up that'll be exciting for Australia. And we're de- we're in talks at the moment with hopefully getting back to Europe on our own headline tour really soon. And that's something that we're really excited to do. We've never done that before. We've always been over as a support band. So it's going to be a real test to see what kind of clubs we can do and, you know, who the return audience is. Uh, but for us, it's time. It's time to go out on a limb and to, to give it a go out on our own two feet. So that's a it's a really exciting thing again to kind of do something that we haven't done and again push the unknown and say, all right, well, how's this going to go? Let's go find out. You know, we've done headline tours in countries that haven't known us before. So let's uh, try it in a country that seemed to start to know us. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go in the, the motherland and, you know, the place where German Teutonic thrash was born. Let's go and try, try some Aussie thrash under our own feet and see what happens, you know? It's quite remarkable, your accomplishments already, and you're such a young band. You have so much going for you. I'm so proud of you, actually. So this is really great, what you shared with us. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk about these the shows that you've done and everything that's going on for you. Yeah, total outstanding news. I, I really appreciate it. Thank that. you very much, man. It's really, it's uh, it feels, you know, I'm sure any bands listening to this will will understand the emotional roller coaster that you go through, especially in an independent a heavy metal band. You know, we all, everyone's got day jobs. Everyone's got, got lives back home that you have to run on a knife edge to do these things. Everyone has those, those middle of the night doubts where you, you go, oh, how am I going to do this again? Like, how am I going to do another two years of this or how are we going to pull this off or you know how am I going to for different band members how am I going to tell my wife I'm going to you know go and do this again but everything that we've done everything that we've kind of every little milestone that we've stuck our neck out for or financially just gone out on a limb everything has just come back at the right time every time we're almost like wow, is, you know, is this going to work or, you know, have we done the right thing? There's that, that little thread of hope comes through and that little payoff comes through that just keeps you hooked in, just keeps you going. It's like, you know, thrash metal will keep you lean, but it keeps you keen type of thing. So it's, it's something that, that, that I think I'm sure a lot of bands can relate to, but it's that, that little bit, as long as there's a, a little thread of of validation that comes back from somewhere like a tour comes back great or you you know you get that next email of an opportunity or or you play a show to to 40 people somewhere and they appreciate it more than 10,000 would type of thing it's those tiny moments that that keep you going it, they keep the faith you know what i mean so yeah, it's a it's a thing that we have been 
like whether it's luck, whether it's hard work, whether it's just we're in the right place, we have always had those moments. So there's there's never been a time where the idea of doing Desecrator has been a a hard sell. You know, it's always been a the next things come along at the right time or the next opportunity that I've been able to go out and find for us has arrived at the right time to say, well, of course we're going to do that. Of course we're going to go here. Of course we're going to do that. Why wouldn't we do that? So it's it's been, you know, it's been hard, but it's been a no-brainer, you know, as to the, the growth of the band. And I feel really fortunate for that. And it's something that, that you know, you never know if that could end tomorrow. But uh, hopefully it doesn't. I doubt it will. And, uh, <laughs> it's rather quite refreshing, uh, your, like I said before, your accomplishments, especially, you know, we're in the underground. We are mm. th- thrash metal. Yeah, we are in the underground, and and what you've been able to do in mm. uh, a relatively short period of time is is really remarkable. So I, I want to uh, give some links there for uh, the fans of Desecrated that yep. can't make it to your shows over there in Australia, or even yep. can't even see you maybe in, in Europe when you do shows yep. over there, so that the fans out there can support you somehow by, by getting merch. So I'm going to start off with your Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Desecrator Aus, A-U-S, and then you have yep. a band camp where they could download the digital files. That's Desecrator also A-U-S, dot bandcamp.com, and then you have your official site, of uh, Desecrator Dot net. Now, you had mentioned earlier about the vinyl, and I'd like to know what we could tell the fans as far as what merch you currently have ab- available for them, as far as yep. uh, the the CD, of course, and, and shirts and stuff. Whatever we could tell them, it will be great. Now, because, uh, because we've done a few of our releases independently before this uh, recent one, there's it's a funny thing. There is different things buy desecrator from over the years that you can find on different platforms because they've just well, stayed low for example i think i'm 99 percent sure that our band camp is the one and only place that you can still purchase live till death which is our first record that not a lot of people knew existed but in in australia that was the record that built our name like it never made it overseas apart from on a few like uh, totally traded distros, uh, but you can still buy it digitally on there. I haven't had a copy of it. I don't even think I have my own copy of it, but it's still, it's still up there. So you can get that there, but you can't get that from our site. Whereas to the gallows, you can get on every platform at the moment, whether it's Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, all that kind of stuff, because that's been put out kind of much more widely uh, from the label. So there is, if you search Desecrator, you can find all our releases. They're just on a few different platforms type of thing. As okay. far as our merch goes, in the Australian release is coming to the end of its vinyls and CDs, so physical copies are starting to run down. Now. I think that, that um, that's something the label will have to look at what they're going to do as far as restocking, but it is still available on both platforms. I know that for Europe, that Violent Creek do have the CD out and they are doing vinyl. So there will be uh, something for all the Europeans to be able to get. I've always said uh, if there's anyone in any part of the world who for some reason click on a link to try and buy a Desecrator album that can't find it, all they need to do is contact the band. There's no point where I'm not going to be sending someone a CD if they want a Desecrator CD or a vinyl. I'm, I'm big on the old school of, you know, of finding bands and going, all right, well, I can't work out how to get that, so I'll just email the band. And then the band, you know, is excited to hear from you, so they hook you up. So anyone in the world can get Desecrator stuff easy enough through me and through the shop, uh, through our shop. We've got we've got shirts on there. We've got pins. We've got badges. We've got patches. Uh, we've got – I'm pretty sure there's bar runners. There's stubby holders. There's G-strings. There's, there's a lot of things with a Desecrator stamp on it too. So everyone from you to your dog to your missus can look great in a bit of Desecrator gear. Uh, and all that stuff's available too. I know that uh, we get – occasionally dudes will email us you know from different parts of the world whether it's south america or you know uh whether it's malaysia or places we've been and they won't be able to you know different places have different postage worries and things like that but again if someone wants some desecrator i'm going to get it to them so so in that you know in that underground sense it's very digitally easy to get all our stuff but physically it's just as easy by getting in touch with me or the band i'm never going to leave someone hanging who wants my music 
We appreciate that. Thank you for letting us know this. And I want to give your YouTube channel. Uh, beyond yep. that, I also noticed you have a, had a bunch of uh, live performance videos on the yeah. Creator Facebook. But uh, the YouTube is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash desecrator australia all spelled out there and uh i want to talk about some videos that i have noticed on there and maybe mm. you can give us some background information yeah. they have the lyric video uh, the title track to the gallows the official video for thrash is a verb if you could tell us more about these videos who directed them who edited them and yep. the process of that the youtube thing's been a really cool focus for us like uh again being a live band uh it always made sense to to capture as much of uh, our live shows as we could because it was a way to reach people who, as you say, you know, don't have a chance to come to the shows in in Australia or you know might not see us in Europe. And it was a way that that YouTube's it was so easy for everyone to access everything they want to. And it was a it was a a decision we made early on that we really wanted to get a lot of videos out. We didn't have a lot of budget to do film clips, so that wasn't a big focus to try and you know compete with the big label bands and bring out high production film clips it was more let's show people what we do you know let's show people what the band's about and that is a great thing that, that people can can check out because there's there's video you know the, there's live video from from playing in brazil when i, I, I smashed my ankle falling off a bar and i'm sit, oh. sitting down on a, a stool every night with my my ankle in traction you know playing playing the last eight brazil shows just just sitting at the front of the stage there's videos of that there's videos of playing to thousands of airborne fans there's videos of you know backstage with crowbar on tour with them there's video there's all kinds of stuff we've got out there and it's gr great to be able to share that content it's great that that content can be captured and put on a platform that people can watch it as many times or share it with their friends and we can push it out and say check out how good this show was it was a really you know cool night we wish everyone in the world could have been there but obviously you can't but you can see it you know it doesn't those moments don't have to be just just momentary anymore they're captured they're they're there forever so that's a really big thing for us and you know when we were thinking about the film clips for the songs for to the gallows um doing thrash is a verb as a live clip uh that's all footage from when we toured last year it's got footage from uh a headlining brazil tour we did uh a mexican tour we did uh it's got the venom uh shows and it's got the overkill shows so it's got pretty much a whole year and five international tours worth of shows condensed down into that song and it seemed to fit really well because thrash is a verb is all about it being you know, as the first line says thrash is a verb it's an action it's a doing word it's it's all about the movement the energy of thrash metal and that's what we're all about so doing that clip as a live clip made a lot of sense to us and that's been something that we've always focused on with our live clips it was the same uh, there's a film clip up there for red steel nation which is another, another one of the tracks on the the album um that's a big one for us in australia there's a there's a beer we have here that uh, a beer here. How Australian did that sound? <laughs> um, there's a beer we have here called Melbourne Bitter, and it's a uh, it's the choice of um, most people in this town. But it's a beer that we're staunchly proud of. And when you buy it in a can, it's a it's a red can, so we call it Red Steel. Uh, and uh, we actually wrote that song called Red Steel Nation about about drinking melbourne bitter and that's become a big thing uh for the band and uh it's become a big thing that people chant and hold up at shows which is really cool that that's happened and again we decided that because that is such a such an australian thing and such a melbourne thing that we do uh, we'd film i think we film maybe three or four shows uh to do that one i think one of them was supporting sepultura the other one was uh, a couple of them were just uh, desecrated club shows here like really kind of sweaty 300 person kind of club shows in, in tiny rooms. And it, it made sense to put that out because we were showing all the people, you know, becoming so staunchly proud of that song there in the clip. So our clips are kind of been no brainers in that way. We just focus on what we've got. The, the lyric video for To The Gallows, I've got a really love hate relationship with. Um, that was an idea the label really wanted to put <laughs> to, to push us to do. And I think it's the one and only time that a label's won an argument uh, to do something. <laughs> The, that I haven't been 100% keen on because I, I just, lyric videos, like, they're relevant, heaps of bands do them, but they just don't do anything for me. I just, I don't know, there's something cringeworthy about a lyric video. Like, I'm, 
I'm cool with people wanting to know the lyrics and we write them in the albums and, you know, I like reading people's lyrics and going through them, but lyric videos was just something that we were like, oh, I don't know if we want to be one of those bands, but we did it and we put it out and hopefully people still enjoy it. But I've got to, like, I don't know, maybe every two or three months I get tempted to, to pull it down off the internet oh, <laughs> to really? get rid of it and erase it. But I don't oh. know, people seem to dig it, so I'll let them have it. Yeah, the I don't get my way it. all the time. Right, definitely the people um, are enjoying it, sure. Yeah, and then uh, Balancing on a Blade, which again is another track that that song's been around for a while. Uh, that was our first ever film clip, and it's our only uh, narrative film clip. And that uh, we had a lot of fun doing that one. That's one that uh, that I'd recommend that people check out. That's unbelievable. Uh, it, uh, it, it it follows the the story of the band, uh, basically pissing me off in my car until I murder them all. Uh, there's a lot of it's it's just shot <laughs> in a really kind of B grade horror the splatter movie style there's a lot of fake blood gets thrown around uh and it's really uh a friend of ours uh in melbourne is a is a horror movie maker he runs a company called fan terror films and he does a lot of independent horror movies over here he was uh a guy who used to sing in hardcore bands here so i knew him through the music scene and he really wanted to do something with us so we called in some favors we had a mate who's a big pyrotechnician over here and he brought in the explosives. So there's explosions, there's fake blood, and uh, the band gets murdered. So uh, I, de- I, I definitely recommend people check that one out. The uh, band gets it's murdered. pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. No, we can't let that yeah, well, they shouldn't have pissed me off. They spilt, <laughs> they spilt beers in my car. They picked their nose in my car. They give me the shits in the car, so I had to murder them. No respect. <laughs> I tell you, there's no respect. Exactly. Man, I love my car. Don't do that. Exactly. <laughs> so, well, yeah, people should check that one out. That one's up on YouTube as well. Yeah, thank you for that info. And uh, uh, So that yeah, that's a fun one. We, we every now and then we forget about that one, and uh, someone will bring it up at a show like, dude, I totally know what you're talking about, about people in your car. It makes me so angry. I'm like, right, you can relate. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, thanks for the info, and uh, thanks for all the info on the videos there. And yeah. uh, I'd like to know what we could tell the listeners out there as far as where do you see the band in years to come, and what can we tell them what they, the fans of Desecrated, what they can expect next from your band? The band trajectory, if you like, or the, or the goal hasn't really... Fun- kind of hasn't faltered from day one we really we started this band to play and that's all we want to do we just want to keep playing man we want to take desecrated we'd love to take desecrated to the states soon it's been an idea that we haven't explored too far uh we've put a lot of f- focus into europe because europe showed us a lot of support early on uh but exactly. we'd l- yeah. love to get some support uh, and get over to the states we've toured with a lot of american bands in europe uh so there's a lot of Kind of a lot of dialogue going on there about opportunities. That's great news. You know, we, yeah. The two at Australia early on with Havoc uh, and got along really well with those dudes. And uh, as I mentioned, we've been out with Overkill and Crowbar and uh, and Hyrax and played with DRI in Australia and a lot of bands. And the, they've come out here from the states. So you know, we'd love to get a tour over there and you know go and see America and see see what is happening in the live scenes over there and what's happening in the thrash scenes over there. Because again, you know, you go to any little landmass and their their interpretation of of your genre is always going to be slightly different and especially going to the continents that that originated you know the genre that we hold so dear it's nice to go and see the pure strains you know to go and experience uh people playing something that you've grown up idolizing it but but playing it from a perspective that was closer to the original gene pool so we'd love to do that we'd love to return you know as i'm saying we're talking about returning to europe already and we we definitely want to get back to to south america because that was a really cool thing for us and you know revisit all the the places but i think it's going to be a a case of what's the next record going to look like you know when's it going to come out and then when are we going to tour it type of thing we've already started writing as i you know briefly mentioned before which is a really cool thing for us uh to get into that creative space and to to harness that at the moment i think the the music that we're writing as any band does album to album you try and try and outdo your last album or not you know not really beat the last album but you try and obviously uh, keep the quality going and you strive to release the best kind of music you can and you apply what you've learned in the time in between like whether it's 
uh, feedback from shows or watching how an audience reacts to, to the band. You know, you try and incorporate that into into your next batch of songs so that you can best communicate your music with your fans and make some songs that they understand. So we're in a really cool period at the moment where the, the music, I think, is is the most intense it's ever been, which is a strange thing for us because it was already kind of at the peak of intensity for what we were writing. Um, but it's it's coming out thick and fast. It's coming out really like foot to the floor kind of proper fast, you know, fast forward music. So uh, we're enjoying just sitting with that and riding where it goes. We'll try and get something out. There's a bit of a plan. We're going to try and the label are pretty keen for a single to come out over summer here. So we're keen to, you know, we're, we're exploring what that'll look like and what the song is going to look like. And that'll hopefully be something that, that people can sink their teeth into and go, wow, you know, like I, you know, whether they just discovered us onto the gallows or to the gallows was just the most recent album they heard of ours. Like they can, they can go, all right, well, to the gallows was cool. I like this song. I like that song, you know, whatever, but, it seems like they're kicking it. They've found an extra gear. It seems like they're going to fast forward even further. So, you know, I'm, I'm keen to show progression. I always like showing the bands onto the next phase and the next step. So that's something that's, re- you know, really cool for us to be able to get out there. So we're looking forward to doing that over summer and, you know, see where that leads and if we can get it out strong and what the label want to do with it. Uh, and then we'll, from there, we'll, you know, go gung-ho into some shows and keep writing the record and, and kind of springboard to see what we can do uh, with the growth of the band uh, internationally. And then that'll kind of pave the way for the next few years because as long as we get those little encouraging signs that there is the next tour or the next promoter contacts us and says, hey, we're doing this thing, do you want to be part of it? You know, something I can build a tour around or getting a festival here or a, a great, you know, great lineup of a show there those things are enough to just show us we're on the right track and that we can just keep building, man. And slowly we just hope to play to bigger crowds in more places in the world. We hope to meet more people, play with more cool bands, discover more local bands, you know, like us that are on different continents and build that network of, of bands that can tour together and bands that kind of hook each other up and help each other out, you know, like, just build that that underground ethic and ethos, but build it on a bigger scale to to more people as we go along and collect them as we go. You know, it's going to happen for you, and that's great for for you and for your fans because your yep. fans totally uh, they love you and your music. So definitely, they'll be there for you and watch you grow. And we're all going to be very happy when this does happen for you because it's going to happen. There's, there's no way yeah, you it, could deny that. I don't think that we're going to stop until it does. <laughs> I think that's the thing. It's actually, the, there's no choice in the matter. Like we're just going to make it. Like there was a conversation I can remember just before we got our first, uh, first European tour. It was, uh, just before we went, uh, we did a bunch of dates with, with Hyrax. And then we did two weeks, uh, we did in Russia after that tour. It was, a, it was our first time that we were going overseas and we we're all sitting around as a band looking at the contract and just going through the, the nitty gritty of it uh, at the back of someone's house. And, and we, were, we were talking and the dudes were like, you know, what, you know, what's the way we're looking at this? And do we need to, to think about involving labels? Do we need to wait for this? Do we need to wait for that? And everyone, it was this great moment where everyone agreed that this band won't wait. This band will continue to grow no matter who wants to involve themselves from the music industry. This band will continue to push forward, to push the envelope and, anyone who wants to get on board good for them but we're not going to wait we're not going to stop and we're not ever going to you know hold ourselves back because it's just there's no reason to there's no reason to wait everything you could want to do as a band is at your fingertips these days and hard work makes it happen so we just aren't going to stop man <laughs> no and the underground all needs to stick together as as that's the norm because with this, exactly with man the numbers yeah. everything can happen never leave yeah it's totally on, man on, 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 on turn for sure yeah and if there's one scene and crowd who uh you know a staunch you know stiff upper lipped and supportive to the bitter end it's metalheads man yeah, like man. like metal crowds are like no other they they really are and like proper proper in it for life you know uh like fans of heavy metal they never grow out of it they never get over it and they never stop enjoying 
discovering the next piece of it, you know, right. like whether it's a local band or some big band that's come out by a label, metalheads love knowing the next thing. They, they love the next, you know, the next piece in the puzzle of their, of their record collection. And that's something that it sets metal fans apart. And it's something that, that, you know, as a band that we're you know, honored and appreciative of, but at the same time, we're proud of because we're metal fans too. We're the same thing. And we, you know, we stand there with these people who, who, you know, decide to pay money to come to our shows and check us out. And we stand shoulder to shoulder with them and say, you know, it's the same thing, man. We're doing the same thing. If we're not playing, we're just doing the same thing you are. We're going to check out that next band too. And that's, there's no difference. Bands, crowd, fans, they're, they're all just one group of people that are in it together that are all integral to heavy metal surviving. Because if you take one single piece out, the whole house of cards falls down. So I think that, um, that that's a really cool thing about metalhead. It's a cool thing about the metal scene. It's a cool thing about, you know, metal as a lifestyle. And it's a, it's a thing that I wouldn't give up for the world. And I think most metalheads would agree with that. Yeah, I think you're right. And uh, I just want to know, what, what do you do when you're not doing the band? Uh, what do you do for your day job, as they said? I, I've been through a fair few different ones, man. I've uh, been everything from, I for, for years and years, I worked in a guitar shop, which was a pretty cool job. I think that's a, like as a young guy, that's like a, dr a dream job for getting straight out of high school. And I sat in that one for a long time. I've been, uh, I'm a tow truck driver drive tow trucks and drag cars up chains and go get smashed cars and broken down and burnt out cars and drive big trucks around the place i do a bit of that and i just pick up any jobs in between man for me desecrator does enough and desecrator is busy enough that i just have to fill to fill the gaps so i don't really care what i do for a job because it's not the focus of my life the focus of my life is desecrator so i just need to pay the bills while i'm home you know what i mean i got you yeah yeah, but uh, but as far as jobs go, driving driving tow trucks is uh is one of the more fun things I've learned to do in my life. <laughs> it's like it's like playing with your toy cars when you're a kid and smashing them into each other, just on an adult scale. <laughs> yeah, you must love pushing things up. It's with a lot it of fun. It, it kind of suits the heavy metal vibe. <laughs> yeah, it, it works. <laughs> exactly. Not bad at all. So, uh, Riley, I, I want to thank you very much for spending time with us tonight on the Metal Meltdown on Metal Messiah Radio. I do believe we learned that this crater is the real deal and has a lot going on for it. So I owe you a lot of congratulations. And I want you to keep in touch with us here so that we could follow up with you and talk about your future releases and, and everything related to Desecrator. So definitely you know, keep in touch with me so we, that we, in the underground, we could help each other by... by uh, posting for you sharing with the word on whether you have a new release or whether you have a new video or new uh, show tours lined up or anything like that so definitely keep in touch with us so we they can do you know what we can for you so i have to tell you it's, it's been a pleasure and you've been a very charming uh, interview i must say that and i'd like to know if at this time you would like to say anything to your fans that are tuning in out there man i think the biggest thing that you know that that I can't take enough opportunities to say to you know to to people like yourself who have taken the time to check us out and offer us a chance to to communicate with people on a, pl a platform to the people who are l listening to this and going to potentially ch check out the interview and then be interested enough to maybe go and you know see the band if they get a chance or or check out a YouTube clip while they're sitting listening to this or you know. This is the opportunity to, to say thank you, to say thank you to to, to people for, for spending the time to care, to spending the time in such a such a, a fast turnover, 24-hour news cycle world to care enough to spend to spend more than a moment on something, to spend more than a moment's attention span checking out my band it's something that, that that humbles me no matter no matter how many times or what level it happens it, it really does it humbles me that that people do care enough to to give me the opportunity to do something that i've always dreamed of doing so you know i look forward to meeting every single person who checks out this at some point somewhere on the road and having a beer you know and i do look forward to to keeping in touch with you know with the program to be able to report back in and say, you know, Hey man, it's been 12 months and we've done this and we're real stoked to be able to come back and say, here's what we're doing. You know, it's a really cool thing. And it's a, 
it's as you say, the underground stick together, and it's a cool it's a cool thing to achieve things as part of the underground because when a band that's linked into a proper n- network of people achieves something, we achieve it on behalf of everyone who believes in us. We don't just achieve it for ourselves. It's not a selfish thing. It's you know, of course, we are out here living our dream and loving every minute of it. But at the same time, we're achieving something for, for everyone who bought our record, for everyone who believed in us, for everyone who said, all right, I'm going to support Desecrator because I believe they're going to do something. Every time we kick a goal or, or reach a milestone, you know, we validate their belief and their time to actually support us. And that's, that's something that I'm really proud to do for people. You know, if people spend the time caring about us, we spend the time caring about them, you know. Yeah, those are very meaningful words. I'm very glad you said it. I could not have said that any better. And I am so happy that we actually had the opportunity to do this. Before we go, I just want to wish you and all in Desecrator a great new year. May you have some great shows coming up in the year 2018. You know, Happy New Year and all that. And uh, Thank may you very have, much, man. Yeah, may you have continued success. You sound, you know, what I got from, from our conversation is, you have everything in, in in the right order. I mean, things are working out really good for you. But I know you've been real busy and with the shows with Airborne and all that. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, congratulations to you and all your accomplishments again. And just keep doing what you do, and we'll be here to talk about it. Damn straight, man. It sounds like a plan. We'll both keep at it, and we'll uh, check in and be happy about it at a later date. Sounds like a plan. But for now, let's go crank <laughs> up some more Desecrator. Hell yeah, man. <laughs>